Standard & Poor's has recently published its revised criteria for insurance ratings. It's now also started to publish rating updates. As part of that process, it's been clear that the group uh, structure that insurance companies have is an interesting element in the rating. I'm very pleased to be joined by Michelle Brennan to talk about this a bit more. Michelle, why is the group methodology important? We think the group rating methodology is important because the risks faced by an investor or a counterparty do depend somewhat on exactly which legal entity within the group they're dealing with. Some legal entities will have various country-driven risks, some will have um, other types of business profiles that could be more um, beneficial than other parts of the group. And in the group rating methodology, we think about the impact of being part of that group in terms of are there potential for support from a stronger parent? Are there, however, potential risks that could drag down a part of a group because of risks elsewhere in the, in the company? The group rating methodology that you mentioned, how has that altered things for holding companies in particular? Okay. We previously had several separate or distinct standalone criteria articles for holding companies, but in order to make it easier to, f to follow, we've put them all into or rolled the whole holding company criteria into the group rating methodology criteria. And what the criteria talks about is how, as a, a holding company creditor, you're often subordinated or at a potentially disadvantaged position vis-a-vis -vis the creditors of the operating companies within the group. So the criteria talks about the various things we look at to assess the degree of a gap in creditworthiness between the holding company and the operating companies and um, helps to inform what the difference in ratings might be. Okay. And what else uh, should people be looking out for in the group rating methodology? What else of interest in there? Okay. From an insurance perspective, we've widened the number of group status categories that we have for subsidiaries to include two new categories of highly strategic and moderately strategic. Sounds a little bit technical, but that does help to give a wider range of potential uplifts for support depending on the way that the groups are organised. Uh, we've also provided more details on how we look at captives and also how we look at startups. And also you'll see more information on policyholder guarantees and also other support arrangements that may be in place across groups and how we factor those in when thinking of the subsidiary ratings. Thank you very much. Thank you to Michelle for that quick overview. I do recommend the website we've got on the insurance criteria, which is www.standardandpause.com forward slash insurance criteria. On that site, you'll find all the criteria and the commentaries and also some videos, including one in particular that Michelle has done, which gives a longer overview of the group rating methodology. Thank you very much.